Hello, my name is Jerry Fuller. I'm a professor of chemical engineering at Stanford University, and I'm here to talk about and actually learn about myself the viscosity of honey. We ordinarily think of honey as a, a simple liquid in the context of rheology, but we're going to learn something different today. Viscosity refers to the fact that if for many materials, the viscosity is very time dependent. This is a reflection of the fact that the flow properties of the liquid really depends on the constitutive uh, elements that make up that liquid. If those constituent elements are forming some sort of microstructure, that can be broken down by flow. And as that breakdown occurs, the viscosity will, will diminish in time. And so you have a material it's very time dependent. Its recovery time can be quite extensive. Very often though, these are fully recoverable and uh, at a later, a later time you can repeat the process. This is referred to as thixotropy. I happen to be uh, uh, a beekeeper uh, back in my home at, at Stanford University. I have an apiary of, of three beehives and this is an example of uh, recently collected honey uh, from Stanford campus. Now simple liquids don't have this time dependence. The viscosity is a constant, it does not depend on time, does not depend on the application of stress. And you can see that with the honey that uh, I collect at Stanford. It's really very flowable and were we to measure this, I, I am t anticipating that we would find that its viscosity is, is a constant, independent of time. But now we're going to look at, at uh, honey called Manuka honey. Let's take a look at that material. Now, I'm holding here in my hand a jar of Manuka honey. This comes to us from New Zealand, where the bees collect the nectar of the Manuka tree and uh, produce this material, which is thought to have medicinal properties, but it also tastes really good. Now, Let's tip this one upside down and see what happens. Well, not much. So this material is able to sustain a yield stress and uh, under, the, under the stress imposed by gravity in, in, in this uh, simple experiment, it was not flowing. Now what we're going to do is impose a flow field on this, a shearing deformation, and see how the material reacts. Now, here we have uh, unstirred Manuka honey. So let's, let's insert it into the stirrer, turn it on. And I can really feel the torque because this is very viscous material. There we go. Let's do the comparative test and here I have unstirred uh, Manuka honey and then recently stirred Manuka honey. And clearly you can see a very qualitative and noticeable difference. But interestingly, if we allow this material to sit quiescently, it will restructure and behave like the one in my, in my left hand. Well, this was a demonstration of the property of thixotropy, the property where a structured fluid will break down during flow and a property such as viscosity will rapidly diminish in time only to build back up as that structure is allowed to reform and uh, reestablish. Now, this is a very important property, thixotropy, that is used for practical purposes. For example, in, in the design of paint materials, we want a material that we can easily apply to a surface and, under the influence of gravity. And, uh, but when we release that shearing stress with a roller or a paintbrush, we want that structure to rebuild and thereby increase the viscosity. So this is, is not only an important fundamental property of complex liquids, but also a very important uh, uh, property in the design of fluid applications. And I want to thank my hosts here at the University of, of Illinois for making this presentation possible, and for you for taking the time uh, to build up your knowledge of rheology. Thank you.